Good morning and welcome to Little by Little, a short time in God's Word. It's Friday and we've been a few days now into these new restrictions and I pray that you're not disheartened or even frustrated or overwhelmed by them. Uh, you can have feelings about them, of course, um, and maybe you're all for them. Maybe you're really tired of them. Let's keep our eyes on Jesus. So turn to Matthew chapter 12. At that time, Jesus went through the grain fields in the Sabbath. His disciples were hungry and they began to pluck heads of grain and to eat. But when the Pharisees saw it, they said to him, Look, your disciples are doing what is not lawful to do on the Sabbath. He said to them, Have you not read what David did when he was hungry and those who were with him, how he entered the house of God and ate the bread of the presence, which was not lawful for him to eat, nor for those who were with him, but only for the priests? Or have you not read the law, how on the Sabbath the priests in the temple profane the Sabbath and are guiltless? I tell you, something greater than the temple is here. And if you had known what this means, I desire mercy and not sacrifice, you would not have condemned the guiltless. For the Son of Man is Lord of the Sabbath. He went on from there and entered their synagogue. And a man was there with a withered, withered hand, and they asked him, Is it lawful to heal on the Sabbath? So that they might accuse him. He said to them, Which one of you who has a sheep, if it falls into a pit on the Sabbath, will not take hold of it and lift it out? Of how much more value is a man than a sheep? So it is lawful to do good on the Sabbath. And he said to the man, Stretch out your hand. And the man stretched it out, and it was restored, healthy like the other. But the Pharisees went out and conspired against him how to destroy him. Jesus, aware of this, withdrew from there. and Many followed him, and he healed them all and ordered them not to make him known. This was to fulfill what was spoken by the prophet Isaiah. Behold, my servant whom I have chosen, my beloved with whom my soul is well pleased. I will put my spirit upon him, and he will proclaim justice to the Gentiles. He will not quarrel or cry aloud, nor will anyone hear his voice in the streets. A bruised reed he will not break, and a smoldering wick he will not quench, until he brings justice to victory. And in his name the Gentiles will hope. Then a demon oppressed man who was blind and mute was brought to him, and he healed him, so that the man spoke and saw. And all the people were amazed and said, Can this be the son of David? But when the Pharisees heard it, they said, It is only by Beelzebul, the prince of demons, that this man casts out demons. Knowing their thoughts, he said to them, Every kingdom divided against itself is laid waste, and no city or house divided against itself will stand. If Satan casts out Satan, he is divided against himself. How then will his kingdom stand? And if I cast out demons by Beelzebul, by whom do your sons cast them out? Therefore they will be your judges. But if it is by the Spirit of God that I cast out demons, then the kingdom of God has come upon you. How can someone enter a strong man's house and plunder his goods unless he first binds the strong man? Then indeed he may plunder his house. Whoever is not with me is against me, and whoever does not gather with me scatters. Therefore I tell you, every sin and blasphemy will be forgiven people, but the blasphemy against the Spirit will not be forgiven. And whoever speaks a word against the Son of Man will be forgiven, but whoever speaks against the Holy Spirit will not be forgiven either in this age or in the age to come. Previously, we learned that Jesus healed all who followed after him. And now a demon oppressed man, blind and mute is brought before him and he heals him. It makes no difference to Jesus. It's the flu, it's blindness, it's uh, leprosy, demons. He has the power, he has authority. Everyone's amazed, everyone but the religious Pharisees. And they come up with this crazy idea that Jesus is operating under the power of Beelzebub, the prince of demons. And Jesus rightly responds, that's ridiculous. Well, that's not actually what he said, but what he said was, that makes no sense for Satan to cast out Satan because his kingdom would fall. And then he asks, whom do your sons cast them out? You know, when you guys cast out demons, how, how does that happen? He says, I cast out by the Spirit of God which means the kingdom of God has come. Hmm. It goes on to talk about the strong man and you know, being able to go into a house to plunder it. First, you gotta tie up the strong man. Well, 
Jesus is the strong man. He's not under Satan's power. And all of us in Christ are freed from Satan's power. You don't have to live life under his power. There's nothing that you have and who you are that needs to be under his control. You are set free in Christ. You have the authority and the power to resist the enemy and he will flee from you. Are you for him or are you against him? There's no middle ground. Forgiveness is available except for the rejection of Jesus Christ. It's called the blasphemy of the Holy Spirit because you're rejecting the testimony of the Holy Spirit, which is the Spirit of Jesus. There's eternal consequences for earthly choices. Choose wisely. Till next time, I'm Little by Little.